Hi, my name is Chris Baber and I'm the Neighbourhood Energy Utility Manager. We're standing here underneath the Canby Street Bridge in front of the Falls Creek Energy Centre, which is the source of energy for the Southeast Falls Creek and Olympic Village development. Uh, this building produces hot water, which is piped through the village, used for the heating and domestic hot water purposes of those buildings. Eventually, the system will deliver energy for over 6 million square feet of buildings, which will include about 16,000 residents. This building is very unique in its function. It's an integrated community heating plant with a municipal sewage pump station. And the purpose of that integration is allow the city to make use of that, that sewage that flows through the pump station for waste heat recovery. So about 70% of the energy on an annual basis that this building provides it comes from the sewage that flows through it. So we're just going to walk around the building here and if you go just to the right of this V you'll find a porthole that looks down uh, underground. So when you're looking into this porthole you're looking at uh, what's called a heat pump where we pump the filtered sewage through this heat pump. The sewage contains uh, waste heat from a variety of sources from showers to dishwashers to just uh, heat that accumulates in, in a toilet bowl that's less standing throughout the day. So there's a lot of waste heat that's present in the sewage and the heat pump allows us to capture that waste heat and, and recycle it back into the community. Now we'll go over here to the sidewalk by Spyglass Place and we'll uh, look into the uh, boiler room. The uh, Energy Centre has three high efficiency natural gas boilers. These boilers are here to provide uh, supplemental heat on the coldest days of the year and also for a backup purpose. So uh, these boilers produce a total capacity of about 16 megawatts of thermal energy and on an annual basis they provide about 30 percent of our total energy. Okay so we're going now north on the sidewalk on Spyglass Place and just take a, a right and walk along the north side of this building underneath the bridge uh, to the other side of the building. We're located now on the east side of the building outside of the uh, operations control center. You look in through the windows you'll see two uh, LCD screens. Those screens provide two functions. One, those screens are used by our operators to monitor the performance of the system and make adjustments where necessary to optimize its efficiency. But it also, it's, it's beneficial for the public because they can look in and they can, they can see real-time information on the energy that's being consumed in the neighborhood around them. So if you uh, walk over here to the uh, wood decking at the base of the stacks, you have uh, two features of interest. Uh, one, uh, it, underneath this wood decking we have what's called the uh, sewage pump station. So where you're standing, sewage is flowing into the uh, building and we have, uh, what, we have a screen that filters the sewage before it's pumped off to our heat pump system that you looked at earlier. If you look up, you'll see uh, five stacks. Uh, the three middle stacks are connected to our natural gas boilers. So when those boilers are operating, you'll see a steam plume rising from the stacks. Uh, the, uh, the smallest stack uh, resembles a pinky finger. That's connected to our emergency genset. It's only really operated at times when we have a power outage or when it needs to be exercised once a month. The, uh, the stack furthest to the left, uh, the thumb, is, uh, is actually ventilation for our sewage handling facility. And if you look at the top, you'll see uh, five fingernails. And those fingernails have LED lighting that uh, responds in, in color and intensity to uh, energy consumption in the, in the neighborhood. So on a day when very little energy is being consumed, so like on a warm spring day, those stacks will be more in the white to blue end of the spectrum. On a day, on a cold winter day in the evening when lots of energy is being consumed, those uh, his fingernails will be a, a deep red to reflect a high amount of energy consumption. Really the purpose behind that, other than you know, the architectural uh, beauty and the wow factor, is to really uh, raise awareness of uh, our uh, energy consumption. District energy is, is very commonplace in Northern Europe. In cities like Copenhagen and Stockholm, you have district heating systems that serve their entire metropolitan areas. And those district heating systems make use of a wide variety of renewable energy options. So their use of dependency on fossil fuels is very, very low. 
Uh, the great thing about district heating is it makes available use of wide range of technologies that you can otherwise adapt to an individual building. More than 50% of the carbon emissions generated by our city is for the heating of buildings. So for our society to achieve serious, significant carbon emission reductions, district energy is definitely a, a big piece of the puzzle. Uh, the use of sewage heat recovery specifically, you know, this is the first time sewage heat recovery on untreated sewage has been used in North America. Um, treated sewage has been used in a number of locations, but the problem is treated sewage is located far away from the, generally far away from the urban centers. This is a technology that can be utilized in, in the areas where the energy demand exists. We have sewage everywhere. It's, it's been a really exciting project to be a part of. It's been a tremendous learning process. Um, it's come together really well, and I'm really looking forward to seeing the system expand.